Hi guys, today what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some different variations of pants. Now there's lots of different plants that we can design and for what we've done so far, it's pretty much just the elements of sort of standard jean construction or your standard pant construction. So we're going to look at some other different sort of pant constructions um, and see how we can draft them. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up uh, one of my pant slopers. Um, now everything so far and everything I will show you is pretty much the same whether you do it on the man's pants or the female pants. So it doesn't really matter which one you decide to do it with. So let's do it with um, the male pant, I guess. Okay, so let's look at some variations that we can make. So we already looked at, you know, the standard stuff like doing a yoke, um, doing the fly construction, which is the closure for most pants, um, as well as patch pockets, uh, waistband, all that good stuff. But let's look at some other pant variations. And I have some images of what we're going to be doing so you can sort of put it in a frame of reference. Um, so first, actually first let's just go over very simple variations that you don't really need a picture for and I don't really have an image for. So um, I didn't really go over this, but you can kind of assume that we can make alterations to this to make them shorter. So again, short construction, we can pretty much go from here. Um, and it's very, very simple. Um, you can probably uh, assume what we're going to do. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to level my pants here, right at the edge. Let's put them on the guideline. And then what I can do from here, once they're both on the guideline, again, if you have trouble really sitting it down there, you might need to zoom in. Zooming in makes it all easier. Just bump that up a wee bit. Double check, see how this one's sitting? That one's sitting just fine. Now, from here, what I'm going to do is simply drop down a line uh, where I want them to be cut. Now we can use our lines as guides. So remember that this was the knee line. So if I want pants or shorts, I should say cut at the knee, I can bring it right down to the knee. Now if we have specific measurements, um, so midway between the knee and the crotch here is gonna be about mid thigh. Um, if you want a capri length, about calf length, midway between your knee and your uh, cuff here is going to be like a capri length, mid-calf length. Um, so you're going to place it where you want it. Let's say where we want it uh, right here at the shorts, maybe a couple inches above the shorts. Now if you want to take very specific measurements, say you need it to be two inches above the knee line, what you're going to go ahead and do is use your draft tool to go ahead and measure up. So I can start here and then measure up two inches. So we're gonna take it two inches above the knee. From last point, okay, I don't want any deviation here. And let's change that to two. And right, fish, uh, right click finish drafting. Now we have a point that we can use to place our guideline right down here. So I didn't need, really need to drag that new one, but I did anyways. Um, now that we have that line, we can go ahead and cut. Oops, sorry, wrong cut tool. <laughs> okay, right cut tool. And then I'm just gonna cut along this line. Okay. Okay, and then there are our shorts. We can get rid of the bottom if we so need to. Get rid of these pieces, and then you have your shorts, and then you just continue on from there. Pretty easy, right? Um, so I'm gonna undo that, because we are gonna do sort of a full pant draft for right now. I'm gonna clear out my guides for just right now. And now let's also talk about the waistline. So these waistlines go all the way up to the waist. And for modern day pants, we actually rarely see them go up to the waist. 
Uh, they typically sit about high hip. You know, sometimes you have those low rider jeans that go even lower. Um, but we, again, rarely see pants go all the way up to the waist today. It's kind of an old fashioned style. So what you might want to do to sort of modernize your pants is lower the waist a little bit. And um, so if we think of where the high hip is, it's usually around uh, between your um, hip and waist, sort of in the middle there. Um, and we can bring it a little bit up or we can bring it a little bit down. Remember this is about seven inches down. So if what I want to do is um, lower the waist, what I'm gonna do is cut from the waist. And how I'm gonna do that is I'm actually gonna use my extend and parallel tool. Now, I know we don't wanna extend, we wanna cut, but if we extend in negative numbers, it will trim it off. So if I click here and then go here, and let's lower it maybe two and a half inches is a good amount for a, a more standard sort of pant uh, for these days. We'll say, okay, oops, sorry negative two and a half inches. So I just got to apply what I just got done saying that we have to extend in negative amounts. And there we are. Now there's a little bit of dart left in there so we can extend it down a little bit further to still get its um, properties. But let's do the same thing over here as well. Okay. See, we still have that little bit of dart there and I guess a lingering waistline up here. So let's get rid of that. Now to adjust for this, let's go ahead and um, extend our darts a little bit. So we don't need to do it too much. We don't want to do it too much. Um, so this is about five inch. So let's do it about one inch. Let's do this one, one, two inches. Okay, so uh, now we're still getting the um, contouring properties of the dart. They're a lot smaller, but it's okay because um, it's, it's still gonna work the way we need it to. Um, we don't need it to go in as much up here because it ends um, and we can still make a yoke. Um, and at this point, if you wanna take out the front darts, you can. So we can just take these out completely of the equation because again, we don't need them in front, but we do need it in back. Uh, again, because the back is much curvier than the front um, on guys as well. So uh, I can go to tools, darts, and close darts if I so choose on the front, only on the front. And then what I can do is I can delete them out from there. But do remember to close them before you delete them or else your waistline will be too small. And then of course this will change the measurement you take for your waistband, so just be conscious of that uh, because now our waist is gonna be a little bit longer because it's not the true waist, it's more of the high hip and that is a larger measurement. So just take your measurement of your finished waist and then make your waistband accordingly, okay? So now that we've lowered them down to a slightly more realistic um, rise up above the uh, hip line, so again, it's coming to maybe about the, about the high hip, maybe a little bit less, uh, we can look at some of the other sort of more difficult variations for our pants. And this I do have images for, so let's go back to that. And the first one that I want to show you is really how to do pleated pants. Which one was that? So I have a, a sort of a small pleat for a guy and a larger pleat in sort of a women's style. Okay, so this is the women's style. I think I want to start with the guy style first. Um, I think it'd be a better place to start. They kind of progress in there, but we're going to do that right after. Um, so I think that's this one. So this is very common in sort of men's dress pants that we have this little sort of pleat here. And this kind of uh, takes place of the darts um, for fitting wise and also gives it a little bit more ease in here. So let's see how we can do this. So the pleat is very easy to make. What I want to do, and I could have actually left the darts in there and used that, but it was very, very small. So um, I'm just going to make it 
uh, by a, a slash and spread. And if you did leave the darts in there, what you'd do is combine both of the dart widths to make a new one, just like we did on the skirt. So you combine those um, dart widths and put a new one in here, and then that will be part of the ease for your pleat. Now, what you want to do is you, you want to um, figure out where uh, the fullness of the pleat is really going to stop. And since this is a small pleat, it's really going to stay in this upper area. So I'm going to say I don't really want much of the fullness to go past, say, you know, a little bit below the crotch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut, oops, again, <laughs> I'm going to cut right where I kind of want that fullness to end. And since this is just going to be a tiny, small pleat, it, it won't really blouse or anything, um, and the shapes aren't going to be distorted too much. Um, so I, you know, I don't have to worry about it, you know, being full and then kind of blousing in. But that might be something that you want. Um, so hey, whatever you want. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to decide where I want that pleat to be. And this was, remember, we had the darts. This was where my first dart was. So why don't I just cut it in right there? And what I want to do is I want to make sure when I cut, I'm cutting straight down along the grain. So I'm going to cut here and then again, just make sure that where I cut is going to be straight from there. Now this is not a great measurement box to do that. Um, so I'm just going to assume that I did it okay. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see what I'm doing. I'm going to rotate out this piece a little bit to open up a space for our pleat. And again, the bigger pleat, the more you're going to rotate. But again, it's this is type of pleat is very small. So the full pleat, I don't really want to do more than about an inch. And that'll give the pleat a half inch depth. And I'm gonna kind of play around with this. So here, distance, negative one. So I want it to be one inch. So let's do it negative one. And then I'm gonna test that. Make sure it's what I want by bringing it back, meeting up this original point right here. Like so. Come on match up there you go and measuring this distance and it should be about an inch a little shy so maybe I'm going to rotate it out just a wee bit more tiny tiny bit Okay, now let's test that. Hopefully that's a good inch. A little bit more. I think I'm gonna call it, that'll be okay. Um, if not, I can just rotate it back a little bit more. And now what I'm gonna do is I want to basically combine this entire pant draft with this new pleat and I, I want to make sure that I'm going to mark it correctly as well because I need to know how to fold the pleat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to meet up my original pant right here like this. Now this is going to overlap a little bit but that's okay. Um, we might actually for the for extra fullness for the pleat um, match it down here and then we'll just incorporate this extra ease into our pants. And again, that'll help with the sort of extra ease that the uh, uh, pleat uh, creates. So now I'm going to protect everything and redraft based on what I have created. So I'll go here, up to here, and I want to go sort of straight up to here, sort of blending that in. It's hard to do with the tiny dots. 
Probably be better if I zoom this in. Oh, didn't I just click there? I clicked there. Definitely making sure that I put a point here and here because that's going to help me um, label where my point is or my pleat is. I'm sorry. And then this is a little bit of a curve here. And then I'm going to blend this in by going sh all the way down here and across to here. Yep. Now there's my pant. I'm going to go ahead and while it's still here, even though I don't really need to, I can actually take it out because I have those points. So let's do that. Come in. Thank you. A little bit further. So this is where my pleat was right here, seven and eight. So I'm going to make sure that I put notches there. Now, when we do pleats, a lot of times what we'll do is in the marking for the pleat, so between these two notches, I'm going to put in a little bit of a directional arrow that tells me how to fold it. So if we look at those pants I had before, we can see, as soon as they pop up, everything's a little bit slow today. I can see that this edge has been folded outward, okay? And um, that's what I want. I want this edge to, to come outward to the other edge here. And it looks like they have another little pleat here. So if you want another little pleat, you just cut twice and, and rotate twice and as many pleats as you want. Um, so what I'm going to do is with my text tool, I'm going to add like a little arrow. Just like that. And that is telling me that this Want, this point is going to be folded over to match this one and not the other way around. And that's the direction that we want our pleat to be in. And that's all we really need to do for um, our pleats, a small one at least. So that would be, you know, good for the um, drawing that I showed you. Of course, then we'd have to fix our grain line and, and, and do a few other things. And um, it looks like I should uncurve one of these points because uh, it shouldn't scoop up like that. It should be straight down. So I would need to fix that. Um, but all in all, since we're focusing on the pleats, that's how we do it. So I'm going to go back and then let's look at another version of a pleated, plant, pleated pant. <laughs> a bit of a tongue twister. Pretty pleated pants. Um, and it was that other one that I, I showed you just briefly. And it has a much larger pleat in it and it really goes all the way down to the... Um, cuff. Um, and these are some lovely um, uh, pants. They're actually, they were uh, Chloe pants that I was looking through to find good examples. So we can see this sort of pleat coming out here, but it's folded in here. Can I, let me zoom in. So you can really see there's the pleat and it's folded, folded, folded over just like in the male pant, but instead of sort of flattening out and kind of distributing itself um, into the regular fullness of the pant, it's pressed so it continues all the way down. And it can, as it goes, it does sort of open up with the pant leg, creating this sort of um, little crease or pleat right here at the uh, um, pant cuff. And this goes straight down the middle of the pant leg. So um, those lines that we made when we created the tapering of the plant are really gonna come into play right now um, because that's where we want to create our pleat. So here's where we started out before. And again, I'm doing a woman's pant draft. You know, those were room pants on the men's pant, but again, it doesn't really matter. And um, we only see it on the front usually. Now you can do it on the back, but we typically only see this type of pleat on the front. So what I'm gonna do to do this is I'm gonna drag a guideline out to that middle point that we use to create, again, the tapering. And remember how I said when we did it, this really represents that center front of the leg. Um, you know, it's, it's sort of midway between our inseam and our side seam, and it runs down, you know, the very center front of our legs, right where that pleat was, was happening. 
and this is going to be really easy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my pant in half. Now you see I've already taken out the darts up here and I would recommend that for this style of pleat. Um, and again, in the front, it's just fine. In the back, if you wanted to do that, just make sure that your pleat width is at least as wide as your dart, okay? So I'm gonna cut it all the way straight down, sort of um, dividing the pants into two. Then what I'm going to do is move out the, p uh, the pants. And to make sure they're on the level, uh, the same level, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that they're aligned down here. Cause I don't want to, one to like accidentally go up a little bit or accidentally go down a little bit cause that'll cause problems. And depending on the width of the pleat that I want, that's how far I'm gonna go ahead and um, move it out. And this really depends on how wide you want your leg. So if we looked at that other um, example, it was a very wide and straight leg. So not only are you gonna create the pleat in here, we're actually going to um, bring out the legs a little bit as well. So let's see how wide I, that was. Okay, that's kind of a lot, um, four inches. I probably want to do it more like three inches. So to get this um, to go as much as I want, what I can do is I can actually use my rulers. So I'm going to zoom in at the top here. And I'm going to move my one guideline here just on an inch mark. And then I'm going to move another one three inches away from that. So that'll be right about here. So one, two, three inches. Um, and I can use that to now sort of move these back in and get that gap that I want. Now I'm just gonna keep it there, but also make sure that I didn't move it too much on the bottom. That looks good. And that's basically going to be my pant plate. So we're gonna go ahead and um, redraft this uh, in the same way that I just did. I'm gonna try to, let me zoom in a little bit more so I didn't have, a little easier to zoom in. So there we go, that'll be a little bit easier. So I'm gonna protect these pieces. And redraft. Trying to do a little bit better on the front crotch here than I did the last time. This is straight down so I can I can bypass all these. Come up. We can actually, I'm gonna change this so I'm gonna just go all the way up here because I'm gonna make that more full anyways. It'd be better if it's straight. Okay, now we do, oh, jeez. I'm sorry guys. I don't know. I'm, a little fuzzy in the head today. Um, <laughs> you gotta do the whole thing. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. Making all kinds of mistakes today. It's just one of those days. All the way over here, we. bit of curve because it is the hip, although not much. You can go straight down and then straight across. Yes. Okay. And now same as before, I want to go ahead and mark my pleat. And what I'm going to do, oh, and I forgot to do it, that other point there when I told you guys it was really important to do the points. But if you forgot, well, at least I can show you how to correct your mistakes. So here's no problem, we have it right here. So I'm just gonna move it back to where it was and then zoom in. And since we still have the template, I can just use the template to um, help me put my notch in the right place. 
Okay. Now, um, what I also want to do here is because this pleat goes all the way down, um, I want to put a line here. So this point is going to come over here and then it will kind of be folded in and then sort of open up. So if, but if you remember, this was the line where um, we wanted that, um, that fold to be. So what I'm gonna do is to help wh whoever is gonna sew this, just draw a line all the way down. And I wanna make sure that it's gonna be straight. So I'm gonna make it as straight as possible. And I'm gonna stop just, actually no, I think I can do this right here. And then I wanna do it for my last point and just make sure that it's going straight. And then that will represent the sort of crease line that goes over here and then kind of comes out at the, uh, pops out at the, uh, at the cuff here. Now, as you remember, that pant was very, very um, wide. So what I can do just to make it a little bit straighter is I'm gonna grab my move point tool and you can do this just to your regular uh, uh, pant draft too if you want a more wide leg without the um, pleat. I'm just gonna grab my points and I don't want it to go too far, especially not on the inseam because the inseam I do want it to be tapered a little bit because too much excess fabric along the inseam and that's on the inside can make it a little bit hard to walk. So I'm just gonna bump it out oh, a little bit. Don't want to raise it. And looks like I did, let's do about an inch just to give it a nice round number. Okay, and we can do it on the side too. In the side, since it's a straight leg, it's even maybe even a little bit um, flared out a little bit, but I'm gonna just go ahead because we're gonna get all that extra fullness with the pleat as well. So I'm just gonna go a little bit more just to sort of straight leg it. And of course, what I'd want to do is do the same thing on the back. So we're gonna pull out some of these points just to sort of even out the fullness. Let's make sure this is straight. Oh, come now. It wants to snap to that guideline. Oh, OptiTex, rarely do you snap to what I want you to. So let's just move that up so it's straight. And we can sort of bump out this a little bit too. And it'll probably snap where I don't want it to snap as well. But what are you gonna do? Okay, so now you have these sort of wide leg pleated pants. Um, again, in the same way, I want to indicate not just with the notches, but with a little arrow showing how to create the pleat, um, so on and so forth. And again, I can still add pockets and my fly and everything just as normal, even a yoke. Uh, if need be, uh, to these pants. I just now have uh, a nice pleat to them. Okay, so there's one more I want to do, and it's sort of related there's to peg pants, which is a lot like this, the peg skirt. Let's go back. Maybe I should just reopen it. Maybe for this one I'll use the female. So here's our female slipper. And the last one I want to show you how to do is um, a harem pant. Now harem pants were popular, um, oh geez, getting old, maybe like 15 years ago. Um, I don't see them too much anymore, 
Uh, but who knows, they always come in and out of style. But um, lots of different types of what we would call drop crotch pants um, are still applicable. And depending on how much you do it, you know, it might just be a little bit of ease. Um, now this is a very sort of extreme example, um, but it has all of the elements that I've seen and there were a lot of different styles of them. So this is very different from what we have been doing. And um, I was looking a lot of harem pants and a lot of harem pants are knit, which makes sense because um, you want a little bit of extra stretch to them. They make them comfortable. A lot of times they're used for like yoga or dancing where you do want that extra stre uh, stretch. Now these look woven um, and we're basically working with wovens too. So I wanted to sort of keep with wovens, but it still has a lot of the, the elements that we see. Um, this one that is different than some of the other ones because it has fullness all the way down to the cuff. A lot of them had isolated fullness here and then they taper down, which I think I might do because it's a little bit more, let's see if I can, I wanna show you that example too so you know what I'm talking about. Let's just sort of Google it real quick. Well, we're not doing anything real quick on this computer, but um, just so you know what I'm talking about. You probably do. Oh, that's not the right way to spell it. Get out of here, Google. I'm not even here. So, um, so you can see there's there's lots of different styles to this, but the one sort of um, uh, uniting factor is fullness and a drop crotch. I mean, this you can get it very extreme like this, but you can see a lot of these are all knits, except for this one is not knit. Um, and some of these I wouldn't, as we scroll down, like I would say, those are all harem pants. Um, this is a great kind of example of one. Um, and these are really interesting too, because um, a lot of them, have eliminated the center front seam. Not all of them, um, but this is one of those rare exceptions that if you do want to eliminate the center front, center back seam on your pants, you actually can. Um, and it's the same reason that we can eliminate armhole seams on things like kimono sleeves and dolman sleeves, is that extra fullness just allows us to make that seam uh, elimination. Um, they can, so I, you know, if you don't have super long legs to begin with, they kind of throw off your proportions a little bit. Now this is, you can sort of just mathematically sort of proportion her out. And she's a normal proportioned human being, but she sure doesn't look like one in those pants, but she is. <laughs> so beware, if you don't have super long legs or long silhouette, you might look rather short in your harem pants. Um, like me, I don't have any. My legs are too short to pull it off. Um, but see, it's super drop cloth, super loose. And I don't know, what was the, so this one, again, it kind of, it goes a little bit more tapered. Um, a lot of the ones that for guys too tend to, to taper. Um, whew. Here again, we can sort of see the taper, but anyway. Here, uh, here's a really great example. So it's a drop crotch um, and then tapered down. But let's let's take a look at how we can add all this fullness, how we can control where the fullness is, how we can drop the crotch, and potentially how we can eliminate that center front, center back seam. Oh, here's a really good example of, of what I was talking about. So the fullness, it's tapered down. So we have isolated all the fullness. There's actually not a ton of fullness. They really just drop the crotch. And as we can see, because they didn't add too much more fullness, they do still have a center front seam. Actually, it looks like they may have put a go day or something in there to create that. But um, we're gonna not do it, and it's also knit too, which gives it you know all that extra stretch, stretch and a little bit of ease. And here's a, another totally another example. Um, I can't imagine this looking good on anybody though. My goodness. Um, <laughs> So let's, let's just take a look at it. Uh, enough explaining, uh, let's take a look at the principles of it. So it all has to do with our crotch depth. Um, so we put it here to reflect sort of natural proportions and a naturally fitted pant, but what if we want to, uh, like I said, drop it? Um, so what we're going to do is I am going to cut here and here 
to extend it up, but then also take from the bottom, or else, of course, they'd be too long. So um, this point right here is where I'm going to cut. That was the one where it sort of straightened out before the, it sort of is the first point that we have for the crotch curve right here. Do, 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 do. And it's right here on our other one here, right? So we made that little point and it's, it goes straight and then it starts to curve. And then here it also goes straight and then starts to curve. So I'm gonna go and bring down a guideline right on that point and then cut right along it. Oop. Oop. Okie doke. And let's do the same thing here. Just need to move it a little bit down to match up with the line. Oop, too far. Oh, now you don't snap. Now when I want you to snap, you don't snap. All right, that's close enough. Now what I'm gonna do is drop the crotch. So um, I can do the same thing with my guidelines as I did with the pleat. So I can place, you know, one of my, my first line. Come on, Optitex, just do it. Don't see, never snaps when you want it to snap. <sighs> snap right there. All right, close enough. Um, and it, this really depends on how much you want it to drop. So if we take a look at like this one, for example, um, we can see, so here's the ankles, here's the uh, um, hip, like right here is the hip. So halfway between that is the knee, which is like right here. I'm going to assume like right here, kind of hard to tell. Um, so it's a few inches above the knee. So let's take some quick measurements to see, and we'll drop it about that much. So I'm going to grab my ruler, and from hip, here's the hip line, down to a little bit above the knee, let's say, it's going to be about 12 inches. So I want, I'm sorry, maybe I should do it from the here. I want this to take it about 10 inches. So I need to add about 10 inches to my total crotch depth. Um, so if you remember, it was about 10 inches to begin with. So I want the, this total length to be about 20 inches. So let's take this measurement, which is about five and a quarter, and let's take this measurement. But again, it, it should total up to about 10, I think a little bit over. Yeah, a little bit over. So we're gonna get uh, about 10 and a half. So I want to add about nine and a half in between. So I got my one measurement here, and then I'm going to drop down. There's four, there's eight, there's nine and a half, we'll say. And again, you can double check that just by measuring straight down. So again, I'm looking for about nine and a half. Yeah, that's close enough. Um, boop. And then what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and put this in here to help me line it up. So I'm going to line up my side seam. Okay, and let's zoom out a little bit. Place that there. And now let's do the same thing for the back. up the side seam. Boop. Okay, now we're going to protect, uh, protect and just go ahead and redraft the whole thing. I'm not adding any fullness. Oh, I lined it up to the wrong place. Oops. Oops. 
oops, 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 oops again. And I didn't protect. Again, one of those days. Okay, now we're ready. Oop. Nope. points just to help the waistline, but since we're going to add fullness, we're actually going to eliminate these darts. And now from here, I'm going to go from up here all the way straight down to here. And then again, put our center front in. So this is now our drop crotch, but like I said, it's too long. We have to take off from here what we added. We added about nine and a half inches. So what we're gonna do is to help us out, since these are angled, we don't wanna measure along these lines. I'm gonna measure up from here to give us a point where we need to cut. Oops. Oops. Oops, oops, oops. Press some wrong things. Well, let's try that again. Alright, it was only nine and a half. Okay. down our guideline. There it goes. Actually snapped to what I wanted it to snap to. Amazing. And now this becomes eliminated. Now if you want to taper that more, because again now the cuff has become more full, you can. Um, or you can leave the fullness depending on how you want it to cuff. Um, a lot of them have those little blousies um, around sort of a cuff, sort of just like this. So you'd keep it full and then sure it in to uh, match a cuff, um, which I'll go over really quickly too. And now we can get rid of this. Or keep it around if you want to know how wide your cuff should be. So let's keep it around just as a, for now. Because again, my cuff should be about like this. Again, if it's full length. So there, there's our drop crotch pants, um, goes down quite a bit, um, and then we have the fullness, and then maybe we'll rein this in with a little bit of um, uh, like a cuff or something. Um, now, also what I wanna say is you can kind of keep it like this if you want it to be fitted, um, but I wouldn't recommend it. What I would recommend is adding the fullness. It really makes the, um, harem pant work. So what we're going to do is we're going to add fullness in here to get those drapes. So if you see this, we see lots and lots of fullness because it's shirt up here. Okay. So what I want to do is I want um, and it also depends what you're, whether you're going to eliminate that center front seam or not. Now it does almost look like there's a center front seam, um, but I'm going to show you how to do it two ways. I'm going to show you how to do it keeping the center front seam and uh, eliminating the center front seam. Um, it's a little bit easier to keep the center front seam. Um, and again, you're just going to do the same thing on the back. I don't think you need to show me to show you it again. So I'm just going to do the front. So what you're going to do to create the shirring or the tucks or whatever else is you're going to use slash and spread. And in this instance, we're going to cut it. So we already have the fullness of the darts up here. That's fine because we're just going to add even more fullness. 
So that's just going to be incorporated in our shirring. Um, what I do want to do, however, is um, to measure my waistline um, because this is going to let me know how much I need to shirr it. So basically when we shirr something, we ex um, expand the pattern piece to about double what it is going to shrink down to. And that ensures that we get nice shirring. We get enough uh, fullness to gather up, we get nice folds, things like that. Now this will change depending on the width or the thickness of your fabric. Thinner fabrics like chiffon, you might need to do it two and a half to three times as much, um, whereas with thick fabrics like denims or canvases or chinos, um, we typically don't even try to shirt them because they're too thick, but if you do, um, it might be, you know, uh, uh, just one and a half times as big. So that's a width of... Oh, come now. Uh-uh. Uh, 8.6 and I'm gonna actually subtract what we have for the darts which I think was about a half an inch or one inch um, oh right because this is the back um, so that's two inches so that would be six point uh, six and double that would be 13.2 so this total width I want to extend to 13.2 to ensure that my shirring is nice and full um, so let's get to cutting and I'm going to cut in strips down. And again, the more you do it, sort of the better. But just like for the flares, I usually tend to sort of keep it a little bit less because kind of lazy. Um, you'll also notice that I'm keeping it all in here. So all the lines need to go from here because this is where I'm putting my shirring. I'm not doing it in here um, because that would be kind of weird. And also uh, simply because the next step we're going to eliminate it anyway. So um, now what I want to do is, what was that, 13.2. Uh, I want to extend it out and space it out so I can use my guidelines again. I'm going to clear my guidelines for now just so I don't get all kind of confused and let's start here at 52 come on and let's draw another one out here's 10 12 13 and 6 will be about here you should probably zoom in a little bit closer if you want more precise measurements. Um, but again, this is sort of just a demo. And remember, I want my overall waist to now be this. So what I'm going to do is start to move them out and distribute that extra space evenly between them. And I do want to make sure that my bottom stays even. So I'm going to go ahead and make a guideline down there. You see, that's the list. It's okay that I have a little bit coming out here because, I'm, again, I'm just focusing on the waist. But I do want that point to be right up there. And it looks like I'm going to need to zoom in and do a little bit of fix-up work down here so it's all even. Oh, come now. I swear to God, the new versions of Optitex are even more brutal with their snaps. Please, thank you. Please, thank you. Sometimes you've got to be polite. Um, okay, so let's see how we did. Um, obviously, we can just measure. Um, they don't need to be absolutely perfectly even, but they should be fairly even. They look fairly even, so I'm going to call it good and then of course you guessed it we're going to protect and go ahead um and 
redraft the whole thing. Now I'm not going to need um, notches here because these are not going to be pleats. You could make them pleats if you wanted to, so you just add the notches and instruct to make them as pleats, but you don't need to. I'm also going to make this opportunity to widen the leg. So again, we're adding more fullness, so I'm just going to actually bring it all the way straight down and then straight across. So we're kind of simplifying a little bit, but I'm going to keep for now the crotch as is. Boop. Now the reason that we don't need the notches up on front this time is because this whole thing is going to be shirred. So, but we do need to put in information about that. So remember what I decided the uh, waist was? It was about 6.6. .6. So what I need to do is indicate where my shirring is going to go with notches. Since it's going to go all the way here, I'm going to place a notch here where the shirring begins and here where the shirring ends. And in addition to that, what I'm going to do is indicate shirring a long waist, shrink or shirr down to 6.6 .6 inches for the waist, okay? Okay. Now, what if we want to eliminate the center front seam? And, and let me just talk about what we have right now and what it's going to work for. So even though we have all this fullness, since we're shirring it down and putting it into a waistband, if it was woven, I'd still need a closure. Um, a lot of times for a lot of these harem pants, they use a drawstring. So um, what you would do to a drawstring is you wouldn't actually even shirr it. You would just make a wider waistband and then when you pull the drawstring taut around yourself, that is how you create the shirring, okay? And that would be the same for um, if you wanted to do like drawstring pants and eliminate a closure. So the idea behind that is the waist is actually really, really big and it's just through the pulling of the drawstring that we um, take it on and off. That in a sense, the drawstring is the closure. Um, if it was knit, again, we wouldn't need any type of closure um, because it will stretch um, uh, with the center front. So, but if, say, I'm going to sure this, um, put it in a waistband, which is what we see in the, the example. So if I'm just gonna pop it up again. Um, see, there's a closure here, the waistband is flat, solid. Um, this was shirred beforehand, and then the waistband was applied. If this was a drawstring, do I have this still up? Let's look at these. Um, like in, what's a good example? Where? These, these look like they have drawstrings. Yeah, so in this example, nothing, no shirring was made. It was made completely flat, and when it's off her, it's very big. And then when she puts it on and pulls the drawstring tight, that's where we get the shirring. Now something like this is probably accented with a little bit of elastic that also creates the shirring. Um, but if you want to do it woven or no elastics, just make the whole thing big. Don't include the shirring. Um, and then again, the, the pleats and the, and the folds and sort of that shirring just appear every time you pull the drawstring around your body and not. Now, you can put a fly on this if you want. It's perfectly fine. There's no one stopping you. So if you want it to be a little bit more normal and pant-like, you can put a fly closure right in here. Of course, to do the fly closure, you need a center front. Um, so you can't eliminate that center front. Now, if you want to do a, eliminate that center front and have a sort of odd fold along your center front or center back, um, 
you would need to do it in knit uh, because you've now eliminated the possibility of putting a closure in your center front. Uh, the other alternative to that is to put a zipper closure, like a little invisible zipper on your side seam. Okay, so uh, let me just show you how to go ahead and eliminate your center front, which is actually pretty easy. Um, so we have all this fullness. We've created this fullness in here. And remember, this only works with your fullness. So what I'm going to do now is draw out a guideline and put it here because this piece is now going to be on fold. And what do we know about on fold pieces? Well, they need to be straight up and down. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to protect, let's get rid of these guys for a minute because I don't need them anymore. And what I'm going to do after protecting this piece is now redraft, including this sort of shape right inside of it. So let's start here. Nope. But this can go straight down from here. Boop, boop, and then straight up here. And again, I want to make sure it's going straight up. So, I mean, you can follow the guideline or you know, hit the Alt key to make sure it. I'm just going to follow the guideline and then go straight across here. I'm just going to go absolutely straight. And yes, I'm going to finish digitizing. And now this is my pattern piece and it's very simple right again because we're going to get all those shirting and again if I'm going to shirt it I need to do the same thing point here point here shirt down to 6.6 .6. um, and this is going to make it even more full so now we're doing it now let's take a measurement what the full measurement is because remember our 6.6 .6 was our original measurement and we're going for around 13 so this is even more that's fine if you want a ton of shirring if not what you would go ahead and do is not spread it as much to begin with, okay? Um, and again, it looks very simple, but um, once you sort of put it together, again, this would be your on-fold line, so your grain, of course, would need to go along here, on-fold here, and right and left, and then you would go ahead and make your cuffs. So cuffs, um, let's just do that really quickly because it's very easy. Uh, our one piece that goes all the way around um, and fits your ankle. So what is my total ankle measurement? Well, this was my back piece and it is nine inches. This is my front piece and it is eight and a half or eight, sorry, eight plus nine. Yep, is 17 inches. So what I need to do is go to piece, new piece, Great rectangular piece and a cuff, especially pant cuff, is pretty much just like a waistband for your cuff. So um, my length is going to be that 17 inches and the width is going to be double what you want because it's going to be folded over. So if I want a, uh, let's say a two inch cuff, um, I'm going to make it four inches. You want it three inches, you make it six inches. You want it one inch, you make it two inches. You want it one and a half inches, you make it three inches. You get the idea. Um, okay, and that's all we really need to do, um, except for label it, of course. And this would be our cut, this would be our piece. We're gonna cut two, one for each side, one for each leg. Um, if you need or want um, interfacing in here, if you want it stiff, so that would be good for your wovens, especially for a weaker woven fabric, a light fabric. Um, I wouldn't do it with any kind of knit fabric. Um, so cut to self. Cut to interfacing if need be. Again, that's going to be up to your discretion. Um, and you see here, it's not going to be blouse that much. Um, but don't be fooled because remember that this is only one half and this is the total thing. So it's going to be sure down to fit this. So you might want to also, if, you're, if it's going to be tucked, you would need to indicate your tucks. Um, if it's going to be shirred, you would indicate your shirring just like above. So remember, this is just the front. What was our front? It was eight. So I'd put notch, notch, shirt down to eight. Now, if I wanted to um, do tucks instead, I would put, let's take a measurement of this total thing. 
okay, it's 17.77 inches, needs to go down to eight. So I need to take quite a bit out of this. So I can figure out what the difference is. Um, so we'll minus eight from that and uh, we get um, 9.77. So all my tucks need to um, total up to that. And I can distribute them wherever I want them along this pant leg. So let's point, put them, you know, let's put one here. Let's make it about, oops, we'll just make it here. And then let's do another one. And let's say that it's gonna be three inches apart and we can do three that are about three inches uh, plus a little bit more and then tuck them in. And then instead of getting the shirring, you get would get three big tucks um, in, instead. Um, and again, any way you want to reduce that fullness so it fits into your cuff or into your waistband is how you want to do it. And this is simil similar to up here. Um, like I said, you could do, instead of doing the shoring for the waist, you could do tucks as well. Um, so again, it's, it's up to you. Um, the, if you did want to do a drawstring, I'm trying to think of like any other last sort of, um, exceptions. Um, I would mark on your waistband pattern piece where you'd want the holes of the uh, drawstring to come out. Um, other than that, there it is. Lots of different sort of pant variations, again, just to help you out. You don't need to do any of these, um, but if you did want to sort of play with the fullness and shape uh, and silhouette of your pants for your pants project, um, hopefully this will give you a little bit of insight on how you can do that, looking at just different other alternative ways to uh, create pants and pant shapes. But if you want to stick to just your basic pant with the basic manipulations of pockets, flies, and, and um, yoke, again, that's fine. Um, it's going to be up to you what you want to do for your pants project. All right, guys, signing off for today.